This is Kara Schatz presenting a recurrent transformer network for novel view action synthesis, co-authored with Eric Quintanilla, Shruti Vyas, and Yogesh Rawat. This project was conducted as part of a research experience for undergraduates program at the Center for Research and Computer Vision at the University of Central Florida. The task is, given an action video, to synthesize the same action from a novel or unseen viewpoint. Since this is a challenging problem, we opt to use a single frame from the novel view as an appearance prior to aid the process. Therefore, the network input is an action video, like those shown on the left, along with a single frame from the desired view. The desired output is an action video from the novel view, like those shown on the right. Most of the related work is focused on video synthesis or cross-view synthesis, but not both. Much of the work with video synthesis is on the tasks of future video prediction and conditioned video generation. Many methods also use priors, as we do, since it helps to reduce the complexity of the problem and makes generating videos more tractable. However, these works are only based on a single view, whereas ours deals with novel view synthesis. Our method also synthesizes the full action video at once, which is more efficient than synthesizing one frame at a time, as several other methods do. Most of the work in cross-view synthesis is on image synthesis or 3D reconstruction from images. Our work is most different in that we work in the video domain, which makes the problem more complex. There is one recent work that does cross-view video synthesis, which requires a sequence of depth and skeleton maps as a prior, making it unnecessary to transform the action from the source video. On the other hand, our method does transform the action from the source video to the target view and requires only a single frame as a prior. Our approach is to extract a feature encoding from both the input video and appearance prior. We predict the viewpoint change, transform the action features accordingly, and predict action key points. The transformed action features and key points are used to produce transformed appearance features from which the new video is synthesized. Now, let's take a closer look at the network architecture. Both the appearance prior and input video have a resolution of 112 cross 112, and the video has 16 frames upon input. The process for generating the appearance encoding is to input the appearance prior to a modified VGG16 network. The features after the first 10 convolutional layers are used as the appearance encoding, which has a resolution of 14 cross 14 with 256 channels. The process for generating the action encoding is to input the action video to a 3D convolutional network based on the I3D network. The action encoding is extracted from the mixed 5C convolutional layer of I3D and has a resolution of 4 cross 14 cross 14 with 256 channels. This process extracts the necessary spatio-temporal features from the video. The viewpoint predictor network uses the combined appearance and action encodings to estimate the angular viewpoint change between the input view and the novel view. The network consists of 2D convolutional blocks followed by a single fully connected layer that predicts the angular viewpoint change as a single value. There is a viewpoint prediction loss computed as the mean squared error between the ground truth and predicted angular change. The presence of this component makes it possible for the network to function without requiring the angular change to be given as an additional input. The action transformer network serves to transform the action features according to the predicted angular viewpoint change. The network consists of 3D convolutional blocks and outputs the transformed action features at the same resolution as the original action encoding. Later, these transformed action features are used to transform the appearance features to match the action occurring in the video. We want the network to focus its attention on the area of the frame where the action occurs. So we use a key point predictor network to identify these areas. We predict the key points in an unsupervised way by using a 3D convolutional network to predict 32 action heat maps from the transformed action features. The heat maps are then converted to Gaussian heat maps with a standard deviation of 0.1 around the most active pixel in each action heat map, which serve as a Gaussian mean. The network includes upsampling via trilinear interpolation to produce 32 Gaussian heat maps or key points at a resolution of 16 cross 56 cross 56. Here, we show some results of the key point predictor network. You'll notice that the key points are located in the area of motion in the video, which indicates that they successfully identify the action in the video. 
These are then used so that the appearance transformer and video synthesizer can focus on these areas. The key point localization is not perfect, but as the key points are learned in an unsupervised way, this is expected and still works sufficiently well. The appearance transformation network is a recurrent network based on a convolutional gated recurrent unit, or GRU, that is used to transform the appearance features of the prior according to the action in the input video. The convolutional GRU takes the appearance features, transformed action features, and the predicted action key points as input. At each time step, the action features and key points from that time step are used to transform the appearance features from the previous time step to the current one. By the end of the process, we have appearance features from different time steps that are combined together to give the appearance encoding a temporal dimension. This transformed appearance encoding is then used to generate the final network output. The final step of the network is to synthesize the target video based on the transformed appearance features and action key points. The video synthesis network consists of 3D convolutional blocks followed by upsampling via trilinear interpolation which produces a video with resolution 16 cross 112 cross 112 cross 3, the same resolution as the original input video. A final detail about the architecture is that we use hierarchical feature transformation, meaning the initial appearance and action encodings are extracted at three different resolutions and all are passed through the transformation modules. During the video synthesis, the transformed features of all sizes are used. This allows the network to extract and transform the action and appearance features in more detail, thus improving the final result. The video synthesis contributes a reconstruction loss computed as the mean squared error between the synthesized video and the ground truth video. We also use adversarial loss and perceptual loss to improve the network performance. To compute the adversarial loss, we use a 3D convolution-based discriminator that predicts whether the synthesized video is real or not. We use the standard GAN framework to train the model. The perceptual loss is determined by first extracting a feature encoding of the predicted video and the ground truth video from a pre-trained VGG16 network, and then computing the mean squared error between the two encodings. All four losses mentioned are used in the training of the model. We chose to conduct our experiments with the NTU RGBD dataset because it is well suited for problems that require multiple viewpoints. It consists of over 56,000 videos, which makes for significantly large training and validation sets. The videos are of 40 different actors performing 60 different actions from 80 different viewpoints, which provides significant variety for the network to learn from. We performed an ablation study to test the effectiveness of various components in our model. The four model variations tested are the basic model, which does not include action transformation, hierarchical transformation, or appearance transformation. The second model adds on the action transformation module only. The third model adds on the action transformation along with hierarchical transformation, and the final model has all these components. We observed that with the addition of each new component, the PSNR and SSIM scores both improve which demonstrates the importance of each component to the overall network. Here, we show quantitative results of our model as compared to five previous models. Our model shows a significant improvement upon the SSIM scores of each of these previous models. Here, you'll see four examples of results from our network on the NTU RGBD dataset. The videos on top were used as the network input, the videos in the middle are those synthesized by the network, and the videos at the bottom are the ground truth videos from the novel view. You'll notice that the action is shown accurately in the synthesized videos, but there is motion blur present. Training is done at a resolution of only 112 cross 112, because any larger resolution would require significantly more GPU memory and time. The small resolution makes it difficult to maintain the fine level action features therefore making it difficult to avoid the presence of motion blur in the synthesized videos. One of the benefits to using an appearance prior is that our network can synthesize a video with an entirely different appearance than the input video. Here, you'll see four examples of this, where the videos on top are again the input, those in the middle, the synthesized videos, and the bottom row shows the single frame used as appearance prior. These examples show that our network is capable of synthesizing videos with different actors, different backgrounds, and even different actor positions. The source code for this project is available on GitHub.
please look at the paper, supplementary material, project page, and source code for more detail about the approach, experiments, and results. Thank you for watching this video.